Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope all is well with you and yours, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, we just not, did not just celebrate an Independence Day weekend, but we celebrated the independence of freedom to know that we can worship the God of God, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. And I'm just so grateful to be before you on this morning and have the opportunity to speak with you. Amen. I've had my share of ups and downs this week. I'm sure you've had yours. But nonetheless, it's Sunday morning. It's a new week. It's a new day. It's a new hour. It's a new minute, a new moment. And I, for one, want to give him all the glory and all the honor that's due to him. And if there's breath in your lungs, amen. If you have strength in your body, I just want you to raise your hand this morning and say hallelujah anyhow. That you don't let life's troubles get you down. When trouble comes your way, you just lift your head high and say hallelujah anyhow. I'm not going to be the praise and worship leader on this morning, but we're going to turn that over to Sister Dominique as she comes to you in her own way. And I believe that is a word from the Lord on today. Sister Dominique. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm sorry I had a little technical difficulty there. Um, God is good. God is awesome. I'm grateful to be back with you all to worship and to praise a true and a living God. Overflow, overflow. I'm getting ready for my overflow. God is opening up a window. Pour me out a blessing. I won't have one receive it. It's called overflow. 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 I'm getting ready for my overflow. God is opening up a window. Pour me out a blessing. I won't have room receive it. It's called overflow. Days of defeat and lack are over for me. What's headed this way, my eyes have never seen. God preparing a net breaking, boat sinking, a miracle just for me. I won't have one receive it, it's called overflow. Everybody say overflow, overflow. I'm getting ready for my overflow. God is opening up a window, blow me out a blessing. I won't have one receive it, it's called overflow. Days of defeat and lack are over for me. Was headed this way, my eyes have never seen. God's preparing a net breaking, a boat sinking, a miracle just for me. I won't have one receive it, it's called overflow. Everybody say overflow, overflow. I'm getting ready for my overflow. God is opening up a window. Pour me out a blessing. I won't have one receive it. It's called overflow. 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 I'm getting ready for my overflow. God is opening up a window. Pour me out a blessing. I won't have one receive it. It's called overflow. Overflow. God is opening up a window, pour me out a blessing, I won't have one receive it, it's called overflow, days of defeat and lack are over for me, Head in this way my eyes have never seen, God's preparing a net breaking, boat sinking, a miracle just for me, I won't have one receive it, it's called overflow. my overflow god is opening up a window pour me out a blessing i won't have one receiving i won't 
won't have one receive it. I won't have one receive it. I won't have one receive it. I won't have one receive it. It's called overflow. How many of you know God's getting ready to overflow your cup? God is opening up a window. Pour me out a blessing. God is opening up a window. Pour me out a blessing. God is opening up a window. Pour me out a blessing. God is opening up a window. Pour me out a blessing. God is opening up a window. Pour me out a blessing. I won't have one to receive it. It's called overflow. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Because of who you are 
The bird. 
This morning, how many of you love him more than anything? Hallelujah. How many of you know you love him more than anything? Well, he's our rock, he's, well, our, he's our rock, he's our, he's our God, he's our God. He's the lily, he's of, the the lily valley, of the valley, bright and morning star, bright and morning star. And we're grateful to him, we're grateful all to bless him. Us, Lord. All bless us, Lord. If she continue to play on this morning, continue to play on this morning, our hearts and minds and hearts and as we go into prayer on this morning. But God has been so good. God has been so good to us. He's been better us than we've been better us than we've been to us. And we thank him. Amen. Thank Let us pray. Oh Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come to you this morning, Lord. We want to say we thank you. We thank you for waking us up this morning, starting us in our right mind. We thank you for the activity of our limbs. We thank you for clothes on our back. Shoes on our feet, food in our stomachs, oh God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your anointing that destroys the yoke and set the captive free. Lord, we honor you in this place on today. We honor you in this place, Lord. We honor you to know that you are our God, that you are our King, that you are omnipotent, that you're all seeing, and that you're all knowing. And Lord, we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you look upon each and every person that's under the sound of our voice on today. Bless them, oh God. Lord, you touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Love all them, bless them, oh God, Lord Jesus. Hold them, Lord, in the palm of thy hand, Lord Jesus. Make their faith strong, oh God, Lord Jesus. For without faith, Lord, you say it's impossible to please you. And Lord, we dishonor you in this place on today, Lord. We thank you all, our heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit, to know that you are Jehovah Jireh, that you are a provider, that you're Jehovah Nisi, Lord, that you reign in victory, Lord. And we dishonor you for that. 
and we love on you, Lord. Forgive us for all our sins, those known and unknown to us, oh God, situations and circumstances that we find ourselves in, oh God, things that we've done, Lord, that were contrary to your word. Lord, but I ask that you hold us, oh God, Lord, you please say that you are married to the blast, the backslider, oh God. And Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your anointing that destroys the yoke and set the captive free, Lord. And we honor you, Lord, and we love on you. And we praise your name. And we give your name all the honor and all the praise, Lord, the glory and the power, Lord, for belong to you and you alone. For we dare not test our glory, oh God, but in all thy ways we acknowledge you and we still that you are the right path. And we thank you. We love you and we honor you, Lord, and we praise you. And I ask that you watch over all the sick and shut in, oh God. Those who are here, near, there, far, and everywhere, oh God. Bless them, keep them, oh God. Continue to touch Sister Harris, oh God, and her children, oh God, and her brother, and her husband, oh God. Love on them and bless them and keep their family, oh God. Love on each and every family in the safe house, oh God. Love on us, bless us, and keep us, oh God. Hold us, oh God. Help us to be the people, oh God, that you have with us to be and to do what you have us to do, to say what you have us to say, to live how you have us to live and to pray. How you have us to pray, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, and we love you, and we take none of these things for granted, but we honor you in this place. We ask you to do all these things to others in the powerful name of Jesus, for we know this one thing, and we know this to be true, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, Safe House Church. Hope all is well with you and yours, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thank you for bearing with us on this morning. Sometimes with technology, we do have some glitches and some technical things. Amen. There's sometimes there are just things that are far beyond our control, but nonetheless, we are committed to bringing you the best broadcast that we can bring you, the best live service that we can bring you on each and every Sunday, no matter where you may be in the world. Amen. For God is good and he's worthy to be praised. And I thank you all for your prayers. Those who know me, amen, on opposite the church, you all know that um, I've been a little bit under weather. There's been in a couple of attacks here lately, amen, in my health. But nonetheless, we press, amen, and God is good, and the prayers of the righteous avail of much, and I thank you all for praying for me, amen, and one thing was the need, and then it was just COVID stuff and all kinds of things just all around, but nonetheless, God is good, and we're grateful, and I'm just so honored to be able to be here with you yet again on this side of glory, amen, so I um, always like, we'd like to start out to say, First of all, good morning to all the Safe House Church members, those who, who are members here and support what we do. I also want to say a good morning to all of those who have uh, been watching by way of our broadcast or you're listening via the podcast. We are just so grateful for you also um, being here with us. Amen. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here with us. And we're just so grateful to that. I want to give a, any shout outs or birthdays or anniversaries that I need to shout on this week. Please go ahead and put them there in the chat, amen, so I want to make sure I don't miss them. Um, I think we had a birthday on last week, but I don't think we have any birthdays on this week. But if we do, I'll give it a moment and see if anything else comes up, if there's anything else pertinent that I need to speak on or say amen on this morning. Please take that opportunity to put those things there in the chat on this morning. Hallelujah. I'm just so delighted to be here with you on the game on today as we're going to continue our series amen that we were in on uh, last week and that series that we was talking about is the heart series amen protect the heart how many of you know that you got to protect your heart hallelujah i know our physical heart you know we have to protect our physical heart from all kinds of things this is why our physical heart is hidden behind our rib cage some of the hardest bones in our body to protect our heart and lungs. You know, we serve a mighty God. You think about the God that we serve when he built us. He built us with a rib cage, amen. And that cage was to protect our vital organs in the sense of it allows us to be able to allow our lungs to expand and take in air, but also at the same time, be able to protect the heart, which is the pumping um, mechanism or the muscle that's in our body that without it, amen, we wouldn't live. And the thing is about the body is that the body has what we call very critical systems and every system works together and all these systems work together to give you and I, um, us um, life, amen. And without one of these systems, amen, there are some things that are in our body that will fail without them coming on. 
and out them getting fixed, amen, then they would um, cause us some great harm. So I'm just grateful to um, him for all the systems and all the things that we've done. So without any further ado, I don't see we have any new birthdays or anything, and I don't think I have any other extra announcements, but do want to remind you, on next week, next week we will be in person, amen. The Safe House Church will be in the building. As they say, we will have our in-person service on next Sunday, amen. Let me see if I can get that graphic up here for a second, if I can find it real quick. On next Sunday, we will be in person. Yeah, here we go. We'll be in person there at the the elementary school, amen. The Simpkins Elementary School will be there July 14th. We'll be in person service at the elementary school so we look forward to a high time there in the lord with you amen and um so please let's next sunday let's be all in the building let's be in the place amen to worship our god amen i know many of you are starting to prepare to go on vacations and all these kind of things and i understand that and those things are critically important but um let's be in the church amen um if you're not so we can come together and worship and do the things that God has called us to do and to be um, inspire one another, amen, and not fail ourselves to assemble ourselves together. All right, so without any further ado, I'm going to go right back into what God has given us. So last week, we had talked from this subject of uh, protect the heart. We talked about what the heart is, not necessarily the physical muscle heart that's in your body, but the heart. We gave this definition of the heart that I'll put back up here for you real quick, amen. Man, that we gave the heart that the heart was this so the definition of heart heart your will your attitude intentions which sources your thoughts actions and words again your heart is your will your, I mean not your will your attitude and intentions which source your thoughts actions and words so your will what you want to do your attitude towards what you want to do how intentional you are to what you want to do. They are sources of what, how you think about the things, what you actually do, and what you actually say. So when we talk about heart, this is what we are referring to. All right, so with this referring to um, the heart here, we want to move expedition to, through this. So last week, we talked about the heart, and we talked about what was the heart, and we talked about the four parts of the heart, and the four parts of the heart let me go to the notes real quick that we brought on last week were simply this. So the four heart, we talked about your will, number one, your intellect, your spirit, and your emotion. And we went through each one of those. So we went through, which, what is your will in your heart? The will, because the heart is made up of four components, your will, your intellect, your spirit, and your emotions. And every piece of that has something to do with how we move and how we walk. So any heart that you see has those four components. It has a will, it has an intellect, it has a spirit, and it has an emotion. Emotion, how it carries this thing out. Spirit is how it receives from God. Intellect, how it reasons. Will is what it desires. Okay? So your will, your intellect, your spirit, and your emotion. Amen. So we want to go a little step further today. So as you know, our, as the teacher and me, that we start out with the overall definition. And the overall definition we gave you uh, what our definition of heart is and then the heart that we said that it comprises of four different parts that we just went over the will the intellect the spirit and the emotions so each heart has one of those four components but i want to go to the next level today in part two of this series of protect the heart why don't you say that with me type in the chat protect the heart if you're with me and then i know you're following me let me know by tapping in the chat, protect the heart. Amen. So part two of protect the heart on today, we will go from the book of Matthew. Matthew, I'm going to get the verse up here for you real quickly. Matthew, Matthew, thank you. Thank you for being obedient. Protect the heart, protect the heart. Amen. Matthew, the, uh, let's see. Matthew, the um, what chapter? Let me find my scripture here. Matthew, the can you see? I got new glasses, y'all. So, y'all pray for your boy. Yes, here we go. Matthew, the 
13th chapter. Thank you, thank you. Matthew, the 13th chapter. We're going to start at verse 1. Matthew, the 13th chapter. We're going to start at verse 1. Matthew, 13th chapter, verse 1. Thank you for those who are being obedient. Let me know that you are with me. Protect the heart. Hallelujah. So let's go to the, the book of Matthew. We're going to turn over real quickly. And I'm going to share this with you here. All right. So we're in Matthew, the 13th chapter. Matthew, the 13th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1. And it says this. The same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. All right. And the great multitude were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables saying, behold, a sower went forth to sow. Okay. A sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth and forth they sprung up because they had no depthness of earth. And, and when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But the others fell in good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirtyfold. Some thirtyfold. So he says, and he ends like this, he says, who have ears to hear, let him hear. He that have its ears to hear, let him hear. Hallelujah. Let this computer switch back over. It's running, it's running a little slow right now. I think I got a lot of things going on, but nonetheless, we're good. Hallelujah. So if I was to use for a subject on this morning, as we go into part two of this thing, we want to simply use this. And it says simply this. Well, not that one. <laughs> Protect the heart, part two. What type of heart is that? What type of heart is that? I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm out and I'm about and I see things that I may even recognize, sometimes I may talk to people and I might be in situations or circumstances and sometimes I may recognize a thing but not be sure what exactly that thing is. I look at the, um, I'm outside and I do a lot of traveling and I've been a lot of places, amen, and God has blessed me to travel our country and even now to be in some international countries and see things a little differently. And so we know birds, amen, we know birds have been given the name birds because of they have wings and they have beaks and they and they go from tree to tree and we know that more, many of them fly, but so we know that they are birds, but we also know that there are various types of birds, amen. There's thousands of different species of birds. So when I see a bird, it's not just, okay, it's a bird, but in particular, sometimes I try my best to identify what type of bird it is. Is that a robin bird? Is that an oreo? Is that a blue jay? Is that a cardinal? Or is that a swallow? Or is that a crane? Or is that a stork? or a flamingo, what kind of bird? See, all these birds exist, amen, but every kind of bird is not the same kind of bird. Do y'all hear what I say? Every kind of bird is not the same kind of bird. Just because it's a bird and because it has wings and it has feathers, 
It may classify as a bird, but it has a specific type of bird it is. And then based on the specific type of bird it is, there's certain characteristics that that bird may have. There may be certain characteristics about this bird that this bird, because of this species, it might actually eat meat. This bird, because of what it is, may eat certain kinds of insects. And this bird, because of what it is, may actually just only eat fish and rodents and all these kind of things, amen? Because when I think about a owl, an owl is a specific type of bird, amen? And he usually is more carnivorous in that he would eat mice and he would eat fish and all these things, but at the same time, he would still eat the nuts and berries if he needed to be, but he's more of a, what I would consider an apex predator, amen? I think about the eagle, amen, that the Bible talks about the eagle often. We talk about the eagle and how the eagle has this nest up high and all the things that the eagle go through, but the eagle is what? A, just a different type of bird and then we can go to a turkey amen a turkey if you ever seen a wild turkey he's quite smart indeed what you'll find is that he can see full color amen he knows all he sees and he can and now the, the, the going joke among hunters is that if a bird if a turkey can smell as well as it can hear and see amen that you would never ever be able to give an opportunity to kill him so we understand and know that throughout the animal kingdom, there's all kinds of birds. If I'm not mistaken, the biggest bird on the earth is the ostrich, amen. And the ostrich, if you've seen an ostrich egg, it is a big egg. But nonetheless, it stay, still lays an egg. So now you have all these different types of birds. And what we find here, the reason I bring up there's different types of birds, because I want us to understand just like there are different types of birds, amen. There's different types of people, and the way the Bible talks about people, not in form of their skin, and not in form of who they are, but he talks about them in the form of their heart, amen. And their heart, as we gave the definition earlier on this morning, that it's about your will and your attitude and your, and your thoughts towards a thing that leads to your actions and your words and what you do. And so when God does God judges man by the heart? And so what I'm asking today, sometimes I'll be out and I wonder, so what kind of bird is that? What type of bird is that one? And what kind of bird is that one? As I took my children one time, we went to the zoo and we was pointing out all kinds of birds that were all around the place. And we was trying to determine what type of bird that was. And what we would do is then I would, sometimes I would take out my cell phone and maybe I can snap a picture and I can drop that picture in Google, amen, and Google would give me back an answer and based on the characteristics of the bird, that Google would give me an answer and say that this was this kind of bird based on these type of characteristics and then based on these kind of characteristics, then this might be this kind of bird, but if the bird has these kind of things, then it could possibly be this kind of bird or that kind of bird, but in, without any conclusive evidence without being able to grab the one of the feathers or to grab a piece of the bird's DNA, all I could do at best was speculate based on the information that I had that I was trying my best to identify the bird on which I was looking. Oh, come on, somebody. We about to take off here. So what are you saying, Pastor? You're talking about birds on this morning. No, not necessarily, but I want to use birds as the preface of the context of what I want to talk to you about this morning. Just like there are different types of birds out here in our atmosphere all around the globe all around the world i believe all seven continents have some type of bird that flies there then brothers and sisters there are hearts amen and i want to talk to you about this morning about the five hearts amen that the bible talks about there may be more hearts amen i'm not saying that this is an exhaustive list but these are the five that i believe god has called me to bring attention to you on today amen and i want you to look at yourself and say you can examine and say i understand and i know what type of heart is this if you're with me this morning why don't you type what type of heart is this come on somebody put that in the chat what type of heart is this mm. so we start out on this morning we look in the bible told us, amen, we'll read the, the parable that Jesus, what Jesus was referring to here was the type of men and we talked about the type of men the types of men are what the types of men are the explained by what? The way of the heart, amen. He explains them by the way of the heart. He just didn't just put them out there, but it's the way 
of the heart that he explains them and he goes through them. So every time he talks about a different type of seed that was planted, what he's talking about is the hearts of men, amen. What is he talking about is the hearts of people, amen. And he gives us a clear explanation of the various hearts of people right here before us. Oh, this morning, the first heart that he talks about, amen, here is simply this. He talks about this heart that was right before us. He said that some seeds fall on the wayside, amen. If you go back and you look on verse Matthew chapter number 13, verse number 4, he says this, And when he sowed some seeds, fell the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. What do you mean by the wayside? The wayside seed is those who have the unreceptive heart. Oh, come on, somebody. Are y'all with me? The unreceptive heart that no matter what you tell them, amen, they've already had their mind made up. They already know what they want to do. They already know how it's going to go. They've already made up their mind on what they want to do. <laughs> They have made it clear that this is how they plan to move. This is how they plan to walk. This is how they plan to talk. That nothing that you do will be receptive, amen. These are these kind of people that I believe when they hold their hand out, they like this, amen. They want people to give to them, but why you? they want you to give to them, they're not in a position to be able to give back to anybody else. There's nothing receptive to them. They have been burning themselves. They have gotten themselves to a point that they are stubborn, amen. Have you ever met anybody who was stubborn, amen? No matter what you told them, no matter if you told them the truth, no matter... And you had their best interest at heart, that they had already had their mind made up, that they were not receptive of anything, amen. That they were saying that I know my way is the best way, and that everything else is the highway, amen. They were not open to any other understandings, oh God, but they were just shut in on what they knew and what they knew, and their world was their world, amen. I need these kind of people all the time, amen. These are people who sometimes have been hurt. These are sometimes people who go gone through situations. These are sometimes people who are actually scared to embrace what God has done and how God is moving, how God is changing, how God is doing things all around us all the time. And because they are scared to embrace this, they may find themselves unreceptive. Why? Because they're scared they're going to lose their place and where they are. They are secure and where they are. They understand where they are. And where they are, they believe that this is it. Amen. And, and therefore, they're scared to step out of faith. And what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, you cannot hang yourself on that part. Why? Because the Bible says in verse 4 that the fowls of the air will come down with and divide them. Amen. Why? Because they cannot be rooted and grounded. They cannot go. They cannot prosper. So they're only good for food for the birds. Mm, come on, somebody. So I ask yourself today, what type of heart is this? Is that a wayward heart that you're dealing with? Is that a wayside heart that you're dealing with that's unreceptive? Amen. That every time God knocks on your door that you don't say anything. Every time God comes before you, you say, Lord, not today. Oh, God, I'm not ready right now. Every time he comes before you, do you continue to push away and push back and say, Lord, I'm not ready for that. Lord, I don't need this, and Lord, I don't need that. So I continually ask myself, Lord, let me stay away from the wayside heart, amen. The wayside heart, because it's only good enough to be what? To be picked up from the side of the road and be eaten by the fowls of the air. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's keep moving on. So then he moves on, and he tells us this next thing about this heart that he calls the stony heart, amen, the stony heart. The Bible says this about the stony heart. He said that then in verse 13 and 5, he says, And some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. So wherefore they sprung up, but because they had no depthness of earth, then what? And the sun was scorched, that they, because they had no root, they withered away. Hallelujah. That so now you at what's the stony ground that what? They have no depthness. They are shallow. So you know, you walk around and you meet these people who are just shallow, amen. And some of the, this is the thing, those who are shallow typically don't even know that they're shallow. There's no depthness about them, amen. These are the ones who run from church to church, from, from program to program. They won't stay rooted in the ground and they jump from job to job and situation to situation. They won't go through anything. Why? Because they cannot stay there long enough to get planted. 
Oh, come on, somebody. Did I say something there? They won't stay long enough to get planted. Amen. These are the ones who are here today to go tomorrow. They're chasing this situation. They're chasing that situation. And they always in chase mode. Amen. But never getting. Whereas the Bible said, we're getting all this, all this learning, but never getting understanding. Amen. And brothers and sisters, we must be careful that we don't walk around with a stony heart because then what we lack, we lack depth. Amen. We lack what God has given us. We do not go deeply into the word things of God. Look, we believe God with our heart, but we don't follow through on the baptism. Amen. We believe God, but we don't go get baptized and we don't get filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. We say we believe God, but when it comes to the hard things of God, then we start to back up and we change our hand and we push away and we shout away. When it gets to the tougher things of God, we start to backpedal a little bit and say, okay, I believe it, but I don't know about all of that. And so then you got to start to question. These are the stony hearts because what happens is there is sometimes that it can get rooted, but I mean, get in there and it starts to grow and a little bit of things start to grow, but then what the little we wind come by and blow it away because it was on stony ground and it cannot get rooted and grounded. It cannot grow through the cracks. It cannot be grabbed onto. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something, brothers and sisters. You and I are going to go through some things in this life. He never said it would be a bed of roses, but he said, I will be with you. He said, I will protect you, that I will care for you, that I will love on you. And even if you have to go through the hell, even if you have to go through the wind, even if you have to go through the high world, sickness and in health and richness and poor, that he said, I will be with you. Even if you made your bed there in hell, there will I be with you. So we have to trust them, brothers and sisters. I'm not gonna sit and tell you it's been a it's been a crystal stand for me. The life has had some turns, it has some crooks, it has some changes, it has some things that brought me right down to my knees, amen. They wanted me to throw in the towel, wanted me to say, Lord, why am I even doing this? Lord, who's even listening, oh God? Why do it even matter? Lord, see, they'll be all right, they'll be bored without me, oh God. They can go on without me, Lord, and they can do this and they can do that. But then God kind of comes back and he has to remind me sometimes, and he has to remind you sometimes that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But he didn't say it won't gonna be formed, he said it was not gonna work. So those who are called according to his purpose, amen. We have to stay steadfast and unmovable and understand what type of heart is this. Oh, come on, somebody that this type of heart I must be careful of that I don't walk around with this stony heart. In me. So then he goes on and he continues to tell us through this as we continue to go on. Then we have what another heart that we call the thorny. <clears throat> a thorny heart. What do you mean by thorny heart? What does he say? In Matthew 13 and 7, he says this. And he says, And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them out. Choked them. It choked them out. What do you mean by thorny? What he means simply by thorny is simply this, that thorny hearts are hindered hearts. They are distracted. How many of you are easily distracted? Oh, come on, somebody. God will tell you to do this, and you started doing this, and then something shiny came along, and you got distracted, and you went left. And you went right, and you went up, and you went down. So often, brothers and sisters, you know, sometimes it could be the very thing you're watching me on. It could be your phone. It could be your computer. It could be your social media. It could be your heart's desire. All these things can be distractions or hindrances from where God is. You see, the Bible talks about some things of sin, and then there's some things that are weight. So everything that's a weight ain't necessarily a sin, but it can come to hinder you. See, the enemy's job is to kill, steal, and destroy. His job is to what? Get our, our focus off of Jesus. When we think about what happened to Peter in the boat, remember Peter asked Jesus to tell him to come out, and Jesus told Peter to come on out. And Peter was making it just fine to what? Then Peter took his eyes off Jesus. He started to hear the winds of the waves. He started to hear the wayside people. He started hearing them saying, why was he walking out there in the water? Who do you think he is? As soon as we start to get distracted, brothers and sisters, this puts us in that place of thorniness, amen, that what we're there and we're getting rooted in the ground, but all the other stuff blocks us from going to the next level. And I'm speaking to anybody out here this morning, amen, that all the stuff stops you from going to the next level. Why? Because you get distracted. There are things that come in your life that it seems like as soon as you're about to get there, amen, here comes this. As soon as you're about to get that, that money you were trying to save, here comes the cars broke down. Now the house is broke down. Now you're sick and now this is going on. As soon as you made up your mind that you were going to go back to school, now this is going on. As soon as you feel like you made up your mind that you're going to live for God, all of a sudden now your ex-level will come. 
come back and this one to come back and that wants to happen and your health goes crazy, amen. As soon as you make your mind up, and I'm here to tell you today that we got to be careful, brothers and sisters, from the hindered, distracted heart. Hallelujah. Because what these things come, these things come to throw us off, amen. The Bible said, he told Peter like that, he said, Peter, the devil decides to sift you as wheat. But I pray for you that in the day of testing that your faith fail if you not. So, brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to tell you today, that these things are going to come. They're par for the course. That these things are going to come. But we got to be careful that we can identify that heart and say, I know what kind of heart is that. That's a thorny heart. That's a heart that's going to hinder me. That's a heart that's not going to keep me distracted, amen, from the main thing being the main thing that I'm so worried about making money and all these kind of things. And I and I get distracted and not realizing that it's Jehovah Jireh who's my provider. It's Jehovah Nisi who's going to, uh, who's going to give me my victory. And not been realizing it and getting so distracted on all these things that we, we deal with and stuff and the world all around us because what we say that this rumor war on this side and, and this and spamming on this side and this pessimist here and this disease there and all these things would just get us all riled up and we get all all focused and all kilter amen and then we wonder like okay god now how did i get here oh uh, do y'all hear me how did i get here do you anybody else ask themselves that amen i ask myself that all the time I said okay i was doing this but how did i end up here how did i get so easily distracted how did I get so easily off kilter? How did I get so easily thrown away? How did I get so easily to start from here to end up here? To go from there to end up there? We got to ask ourselves, amen, what type of heart do you have? See, th this whole series we've been talking about here is protecting the heart. We have to describe you to what the heart is. We talked about your heart being your part intellect. We talked about the heart being part spirit. We talked about the heart being part emotion. We talked about the part the heart being part your will. And now we're talking about, okay, now that you have that is your heart, do you have a heart that's unreceptive will? Do you have an unreceptive spirit? Do you have an unreceptive emotion? Do you have an unreceptive um, will? Do you have a, a, a shallow will? Do you have a shallow Spirit, but you see how I'm applying all these things, amen. And now you can ask yourself, do you have the hindered spirit? Do you have a distracted spirit that, yes, you want to do these things, and you're going here, and you're going there, and you're doing this, and you're doing that, but yet you find yourself distracted? Mm. Come on, somebody. How many of you know that you suffer with the distracted? We're just talking about we this is how we get better, amen. This is we confess our sin. The Bible said confess one to another, amen. This is how we get better. Pastors suffer sometimes from the distracted art. Amen. Hallelujah. I can get distracted in a minute. I'm working on this and I'm doing this and bam, this come up and I have to put this down to the side. And you know what I call I call it multitasking, but it's really not multitasking, it's just that I'm distracted. Oh, come on, somebody. Let's call it what it is. You know, I'm praying, I'm praying, and then the phone starts buzzing in the middle of my prayer, and I have to fight myself not to want to look at my phone. Come on, somebody. Are y'all with me? You know, so so I, I can talk about me. I can't say nothing about you all, but you know your hearts. You know what type of heart that you have. Amen. I'm giving you some things to identify your heart because we all want to work to a better heart. Amen. And this is how the Bible identifies them by their heart. Let's keep going here for I, for I run out of voice here <clears throat> on this morning. Hallelujah. Give me a second. Okay. I've been suffering with a little sickness myself, so please bear with me. <laughs> All right. So here we go. So the fourth heart I wanted to talk about, the secret hearts. Woo! Now, he doesn't talk about this particular heart in this particular story, right? He don't. I got another scripture for you. I got another scripture for you for that. And that's in um, Psalms. I'm going to say Psalms 51, I think it is. 51 and 6. 51 and 6. And he talks about hiding things. Some of us deal with the secret heart. I'm shameful for what I've done. We all have shame. The Bible says, he without sin, let him cast the first stone. You don't see me picking up anything. We all have some things in our closets that we've done. I know I've definitely had some things I've said. Some situations I put myself in. 
some circumstances that I put myself in and some poor choices I put myself in. Even since being saved. Because the truth of the matter is, we all suffer. We all deal with the secret heart sometimes. The shame, the embarrassment, the ego crush, the pride destroyed, the brokenness. Now, how could I have trusted him? How could I have trusted her? How could I put myself in that position? How could I have done that to them? How could I have done that to her? The secret heart. See, those things that are in secret, God knows. So you think they're a secret, and the truth of the matter is, they're really not a secret. Because God knows. And in due season, if you don't deal with them, the rest of us will know too. As the saying goes, as far, I think Prophet Brian Carr said, and I, I just really love the saying, give time time, and in time, it'll tell all in time. Give time time, and in all, and in time, it will tell all in time. So we have to deal with what the secret hearts. What are these little we call guilty pleasures? You cheating a little bit over here on, on, on taxes or something? You have these sideward conversations with people you shouldn't have? Are you looking at things on the internet you shouldn't be looking at? Are you watching TV shows that maybe you shouldn't watch? I can't speak to you what bothers you and how God deals with you. <laughs> he says it like this in the word. He said, let every man work out his own soul salvation. But my job is to lay this out before you and give you an opportunity to look in the mirror and say, oh God, do I suffer with one of these hearts? Lord, how do we get this together? How do I move to a better heart? A better mind, soul, spirit. I don't want to deal with shame, guilt, and embarrassment. I want to be able to walk and hold my head up high among the elders and among my brothers and sisters. Amen. I I, I don't want to just, every time somebody see me, I say, oh, is she the one or that the one or that's, that's her or that's him or that's, this, that's that. Oh, no. Because the Bible says like this, he that's in Christ is a new creature. And all old things have passed away. So how did you move to this? Well, you know, you move through what? The repentance of sin. Mm -hmm. And those secrets in your heart. He said, confess but those things to him. God already knows. He's just waiting on you to have the conversation with him about it. People, I'm going to take this to my grave. No, that's what's going to take you to the grave. We have an all-forgiving God. He loves you. He's waiting on you that, and he's giving you the opportunity to speak with him about your troubles. But you have to decide in your heart that will, that intellect, that spirit and emotion that, Lord, I'm going to dedicate this to you. And I want to be able to identify my heart. So what's this last heart, Pastor? Glad you asked, and I couldn't wait to give it to you. Then the Bible talks about this thing called the good heart that is fruitful. In Matthew 13 and 8, he says this, But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirtyfold. He who had ears to hear, let him hear. What are you saying, Pastor? All of us are striving daily for the good heart. The good heart is fruitful in that way. It can be planted and it will withstand adversity. It can be planted 
and it can give. It can be planted and it won't be distracted. It can be planted and it won't live in shame and embarrassment. It's with a contrite heart, a forgiving heart, a soft heart that this ground is fertile. See, the Bible talks about casting your pearls among the swine. That what good is it to have this pearl if you're going to throw it to the swine because the swine don't know what to do with it and all he's going to do is trample his feet upon it and he's going to push it into the earth and therefore it's no good. But you put it in good ground and you give it time. And with it being in good ground, in time, then what we find is that in time, if it's watered and it's nurtured, for the Bible said that it's one that planted, one that water, but it's he that gives the increase. It's he that makes that is that germination thing happens. It's he that gives that. It's nothing that I've done. It's nothing that you've done, but it's our God who does that. And therefore, we have to what? Trust the process. Trust that he knows you, that he sees you. He knows what you've been through. He knows when you've been unreceptive. He knows when you've lacked shallow or you was deaf. He knows when you've been hindered or you've been distracted. He knows when you've been hiding in, sh um, in shame and guilt. But he's moving you forward. And he's pulling you out of that. Yes, you were, but now you are. Yes, you were, but now you are. And you don't have to continue to be. But there's what, another level for you. I don't care how old you are. If you still have life and you still have life in this body, then what? You have an opportunity to go forward. As long as there's life in your body, there's breath in your lungs. God has not forgotten you. If he said that he's going to do it, then it will come to pass. This is why it's called faith. Remember, we talked about faith. We, we preached a whole series on what faith is. Faith is what? A system, right? And in this system, we put our what? Will, our desire, what we call our hope. And we put our hope in that in confidence. And in confidence, it tells us that what? Hey, faith is what? The substance of things hoped for, yet the evidence of things unseen. So, no, I do not walk by faith. I mean, I do not walk by sight because what I see is just a figment of my imagination. We've already discovered that. We proved that scientifically. So now what I do is I walk and I say, Lord, I don't see it, but I understand and I know and I trust you in the process. And I have to trust the process of faith. And I ain't going to sit and tell you that I don't have my moments, because I do. In fact, there's some things right now I'm still believing God for. And I'm like, Lord, where are you? And the truth of the matter is, I have to tell myself, what if it ain't that? Then, but what if it is that? So now I have to stay the road. As tough as that may be, and I have to believe that what the Bible says that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. If you are working in purpose and you are where God wants you to be, then you cannot fail. You don't do nothing but win. And we talk about these time, these five kinds of hearts. Why? Because I believe that all of us at some point in time have traveled through each one of these hearts. There have been times that you've been good and you've been faithful and you've been fruitful and you've been doing good. And then something in life just comes and smacks you. And you find yourself being unreceptive. Your best friend died and you don't want to hear nothing from nobody. You mad at God. Your spouse walked out on you. You mad with God. Your, your health fails you. You mad with God. Then you start to realize why you mad with God. You start to realize how shallow that is. Because without, without even a second, he can just, things can be done. Over. The needle finish. Poof, gone, vanish. Exhausted. Then you start to realize, okay, my circumstances had distracted me. And so now, Lord, I understand, but I'm still not there. Then once you get to that part, then you sometimes you get to that part and say, okay, 
Now I'm shamed, but I'm embarrassed. Lord, how could I not have trusted you in this? Because, Lord, I thought it would have went this, so I stepped out of what I thought was faith, and I went and bought this car that I couldn't afford. And I bought this house that I couldn't, I couldn't afford. And I, I married this person that you didn't really want me to marry. And, and But, Lord, now I live in the shame and the embarrassment. But then God, in his mercy, he already accounted for what you was going to do. He knew you were going to step out. He knew you was going to marry that person. He knew you was going to do this. He knew you was going to do that. And what? Now he does this thing. It's like the GPS thing. He recalculates you. Recalibrating. How many of you ever was on a Jeep riding with your GPS and you missed your turn? Sometimes they just don't talk fast enough to me. Maybe I'm going too fast. And I pass my turn and that thing will say, recalibrating the route. Now watch this. What does that mean? It means I'm still going to get to my destination, but because I made a wrong turn, it may take me a little longer. Woo! Did y'all get that? Mm. Because I made a wrong turn, it may take me a little bit longer. It's still part of the process, right? And I've told you and I've told you time and again that this whole thing, our whole life, our belief system is a process. Everything we do is a process. Things that survive the test of time are systems and processes. So trust the system, understand the process. Once you start to trust God's system and understand this part, remember, he said his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And all he wants us to do is to trust him. That's all he ever asked us to do. Even with Adam and Eve, what did he tell them to do? Do everything you want to do, but don't do that. That's asking, them, trust my process. Trust what I know is good for you. Trust what I know is right for you. But do everything, but don't do that. And what did they do? If everything he asked them not to do. How many times God has given you free reign to say, hey, do all these things. And the one thing he tell you not to do is the one thing that you gravitate to do. That's our human nature that we're always fighting. That's our human nature that we always warn against. And the Bible tells us about this. So what type of heart is that? I'm giving you five good ones. I'm not saying this is an exhaustive list. Could there be many others we can go into? But these five here, I believe, are a solid foundation for you to start to figure out how do I protect my heart from these? And this is something that we work on daily. I work on. You work on. We all work on. Because it's part of the process. It's part of the maturing process. It's part of the maturation process. We've all dealt with these hearts. If you're him, you do. And if you haven't, as my dad say, keep living. You will. But well, today, now that you know, examine yourself. Identify what type of heart do I have, Lord? Lord, am I being unreceptive in some areas? Lord, am I shallow in my, my, my understanding? Am I being distracted in my walk in my prayer time with you? Am I being shameful, Lord Jesus, by not sharing my faith? Am I being fruitful in sharing my love for others? See, this list could go on and on and on. And I can continue to go on and on. And I'm not going to hammer or belabor the point anymore. I think my work is done here for today. But I want you to read. Get a chance next week. Matthew 13, 1 through 9. And see how these things line up here. And you'll find that not only is he talking about the soil, but he's talking about the soil of men. The Bible always talking about the uncircumcised heart. This uncircumcised heart is the one, the heart is uncut, unchafed, unremoved. We always must watch the circumcision of our hearts. That we be circumcised the way God would have us to be. And move how he have us to move. And go how he would have us to go. 
and understand and walk and talk and move how you would have us to move. God is for me. And he loves you. And I love you too. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, we want to say we thank you. Lord, with a contrite heart, Lord God, a heart of brokenness, a heart of forgiveness, a heart of kindness, a heart of love, a heart of strength, a heart of grace, a heart of mercy, a heart of love. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this word that was given on today. Lord, I ask that you touch the hearts and the minds of brothers and sisters, Lord Jesus, all over the world, Lord Jesus, red, black, yellow, black, and white. Lord, for you know them all, you see them all, oh God. Lord, I ask that this word, Lord, you be rooted in them. Guide them, oh God. Lord, you that they look upon themselves, oh God. Lord, you in the scripture, Lord, you that say, what must I do to be saved, Lord? Lord, what must I do for you to come into my heart? Fill me with the gift of the Holy Ghost, oh God. Love on me. Touch me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, oh God. Lord, you make me better, Lord, you bring me forward, Lord, you make me whole, Lord. And Lord, we honor you, Lord, you for all that you've done. And all that you continue to do for us, Lord, bless us. And I go in and I go in out, Lord, put your arms all around the safe house church, Lord, and all these is, is extra members, oh God. Lord, love on them, bless them, and keep them. Help them, oh God, to go where you have them to go, Lord, to move how you have them to move. The wall, talk, Lord Jesus, and go, Lord Jesus, where you have them to go. Lord, as you touch them, their physical bodies, Lord, you their minds, their hearts, their souls, their spirit. Love on them, Lord, like only you can. Bless them, Lord, like only you can. Keep them. Lord, like only you can. Lord, we thank you. We love you, Lord. I said you watch and keep us, give us traveling mercy, oh God, wherever we decide to go, wherever we need to go, Lord. You take us there and bring us back safe, Lord. Let no hurt our legs come to us in any form or fashion. Bless us and keep us and strengthen us, Lord, like only you can. And Lord, we thank you for that, Lord. And we love you for that. And we praise your name. And we give your name all the honor and all the praise, Lord. The glory and the power, Lord, for it's yours and yours, Lord. For we dare not touch that glory. But in all thy ways, we acknowledge you and we say that you will direct our path. And we ask you to do things to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I love you. We'll be back on next week. There is a part three to this. If you've been enjoying this, please let us know. You can get every one of these on our podcast. You can go to the church website, the safehousechurchgso.com. Last week's is already available there to you, amen. You can download them for free of charge, amen. Share them, share them, share them with everybody you know, everybody all around, amen. Share them, let get this gospel out that we need to protect our heart, amen. And I'm not talking about just the physical heart. Yes, we need to protect the physical heart, but I'm talking about this spiritual heart of our will, our intellect, our emotions, and our spirit, amen. Hallelujah. If God is... This message has been a blessing to you. I ask that you be a blessing to the Safe House Church in this offering time in the temple, amen, here at the Safe House Church. So I ask that you be a blessing to us here in our tithing and offering, amen. We do our tithing and offering here by way of the cash app. You can just do simply dollar sign Safe House Church, GSO. Again, it's dollar sign Safe House Church, Safe House Church, GSO. Or you can do Zelle at offering at safehousechurchgso.com. Again, it's offering at safehousechurchgso.com or you can just use the QR code there or just go safehousechurchgso.com forward slash give and um, all our gifts are 100% tax deductible and we appreciate any and everything that we get to help us here at the Safe House Church do the work that God has called us to do and we're so grateful to all of you who um, help us in this capacity. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all. I love you all. For God is good and he's worthy, worthy to be praised. I want to remind you on next week, as we go back here, I want to remind you on next week that uh, we will have, um, it's our intention to have our Bible class. Amen. We need to get back in there. We're in the book of Romans. Amen. We want to go to continue to go through the book of Romans. So we will be um, in Bible class on next week. And um, on next Sunday, we is our intention that we will be in person service on July the 14th. So July the 14th, please mark your calendars for next Sunday at 9 a.m. Um, they will be there at the um, Safe House Church at um, the Simpkins Elementary School there in Greensboro, North Carolina. Again, that's the Simpkins Road Elementary School there in Greensboro, North Carolina. That's in East Greensboro, Ralph Eastley Street. And we look forward to seeing you there at 9 a.m. For God is good 
and he's worthy to be praised. If all hearts and minds are clear, I remind you, we will have our, you know, continue our prayer every day, every morning at 6 a.m. We pray Eastern Standard Time, so we look forward to seeing you there in prayer in the morning um, at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's our morning daily prayer from 6 to 6.30. Please feel free to join. All you have to do is go to our, our um, Zoom link that's on our page and just click to join the prayer there. The password is safe house. Amen. Just put in safe house for the password. They force us to do that. Amen. I don't like necessarily having a password on it. But you now with all the things and stuff, they force you to do that. So, um, but the password is safe house. And please feel free to join us there. All right. If all hearts and minds are clear, today has been a wonderful day. I ask that you all continue to pray for me as I pray for you. I want to make sure I give honor to our first lady, um, Sister Felicia, amen, and my family. I'm just grateful. To all of them who have been here helping me and helping me recuperate and get back well, amen. So I'm grateful to God for his grace and his mercy. Um, it could have been worse, amen, but he didn't allow it. And I'm just grateful to be able to be here with you. And I look forward to being with you in person on uh, next week. God bless you all. I love you all. Take care. Have a tremendous day. And on to uh, next week, we see you. Love you. Bye-bye.